Okay, let's do another example of brute force analysis, only this time what we're going to do is we're going to apply the ideas of series and parallel in terms of making the problem a simpler to work. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go through and do all of our steps, but let's see if we can spot any series and parallel elements where we can make things a bit easier for us. And in this case, note I'm making things a bit interesting because I'm actually adding a dependent source. This is a current controlled current source. And in this case, this current flowing up is equal to five times I1, which is controlled by that current flowing through the five ohm resistor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate V sub O. So let's go through and let's write our equations. In this case, first of all, let's first identify all our nodes. And in this case, I've got a node here, I'm going to call this A, a node here, V, and then the node here on the bottom, I'll call that C. So I've got nodes A through C that I've defined. All right. Now let's go through and let's identify all of the unknown voltages and currents in this circuit. So let's go through. Clearly this voltage is defined. This current I1 is already given, so we're just going to stick with that. So let's first go through and define our currents. Now I could write a current variable for that 500 volt voltage source, but we note the 500 volt source and the 5 ohm resistor are in series. They're connected together at node A. By inspection, that current must be I1 flowing through that 500 volt source. There's no need to give it a separate variable name or another direction. We already know they've got to be the same current. Now let's look here. Those are in series. Are there any elements in parallel in the circuit? And as a matter of fact, you notice that this dependent current source and that 20 ohm resistor are in fact in parallel, which means they've got to have the same voltage across them, which means I must have VO across that dependent source as well as that 20 ohm resistor. So given this, I can now say, all right, what else do I need to solve this? Well, I know what the current is here. It's 5I1 that's defined. For this resistor, I need to define a variable for it call that I0. And that seems to give us everything we need. Oh, one last, forgot, need V1 for that resistor up there. Okay, so now every element, every resistor, every source has a voltage and current associated with it. So I've defined all my unknowns. Now that I've done that, let's go through and let's write our KCL and KVL. So for part three, what's Ohm's law? Ohm's law tells me that V1 is equal to 5I1 and VO is equal to 20IO. KCL tells me, okay, what are my nodes? First of all, for node A, I1 is equal to I1. That's trivial. I'm not even going to bother to write that. For node B, I know that I1 flowing in plus 5I1 flowing in is equal to I0. And for node C on the bottom, I note that I0 flowing in is equal to 5I1 plus I1 flowing out. 
Obviously those are the same equation, right? Dependent equation. What about KVL? So for my KVL, I need to figure out where are my loops. Okay. So in this case, this is loop number one, this is loop number two, and the one that goes all the way around is loop number three. So if I write a KVL equation for those three loops, then for loop one, I have that going clockwise, I'll just choose clockwise, start here. 500 is my rise, and that's equal to V1 plus V0. For loop 2, V0 is equal to V0. Trivial. There's no point in even writing it. For loop 3, what I have is that 500 is equal to V1 plus V0 along the outer perimeter. Well, obviously, once again, I've got the same equation. So I get a dependent equation again. So in this case, what do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4 linearly independent equations. How many variables do I have? Well, I've got I1, V1, V0, and I0. So I have four equations. I have four variables. That means I can solve. And if I do that and I plug the equations in, and once again, let Mathematica do all the work for me, what I'll get is I0 is equal to 24 amps, I1 is 4 amps, V0 is 480 volts, and V1 is equal to 20 volts. And of course, V0 is what I wanted, but Mathematica gives me everything at the same time. So in this case, as I've said before, on an exam, just write solve with Mathematica and give me the answer. That's all I need. I don't need you to go through and crunch through the equations by hand. There's no point to it. Okay? Did this make the problem simpler? Absolutely. I effectively eliminated a KCL equation and a KVL equation and eliminated an extra variable for the voltage across one, this source and also the current through that source. So I did make the problem somewhat easier. Now, is my answer correct? Let's check that. Let's do a power check. The question is, is the sum of the powers equal to zero in the circuit? Well, let's go through and do that. So for the 500 volt source, the power for that 500 volt source, well notice the way I1 is defined is against the passive sign convention. So if I'm going to solve for this, I need to flip it around and say that's minus I1 going in the opposite direction. Now the arrow enters the positive side. So in this case, what I've got is this is equal to 500 times minus 4 is equal to minus 2,000 watts. The power of the 5I1 dependent source, that will be equal to, in this case, the voltage times the current, well again we note that I'm not following the passive sign convention. The current direction is going in the negative side. So in this case, once again, I have to say, all right, I'm going to flip this around, negative to positive, and make that minus V0. So now I've got 5 times I1 times minus 5 V0 or 5 times 4 
times minus 480. And that'll be equal to minus 9600 watts. Then I've got the power of the 5 ohm resistor and the power of the 20 ohm resistor. And in this case, I'm just going to use I squared R. So in this case, it's I1 squared times 5. So that's 4 squared times 5 is equal to 80 watts. And for the 20 ohm resistor, I've got I0, which is 24 amps squared times 20 ohms, and that will be equal to 1100, pardon me, 11,520 watts. So minus 2,000, minus 9,600, 80, and 11,520, add those together, what do we get? Zero. So power balance works. I have the correct answer. So once again, calculating powers always works. It will always tell you if you did something wrong or not. Just takes a little bit of extra time, but it can be done. Okay? So we definitely have got some improvements here in terms of being able to simplify the analysis for a circuit. Next time we'll look at how we can start reducing or combining elements together. And we'll start by looking at how we can combine voltage and current sources together.